Hey everyone, it's Chrono from the Headphone Show. Today with me, I have the Hi-Fi Man HE400SC. Let's check it out. Back when it originally released, the HE400 was a well-received headphone that retailed at the mid-range price of around 399 US dollars. In the decades since then, it's been through countless revisions and it's also served as a blueprint for several Hi-Fi Man headphones such as the HE400i or the Drop Edition 4XX. With this new SE edition though, we see the HE400 release with a lot of the improvements and innovations it's received over the years and it's also available at its lowest MSRP yet at $149.99. So as always, we'll start off this review by checking checking out its accessories. Well, there really isn't much to say here, as the unboxing experience with the HE400 SE is a very simple one. You slide off the top lid and you're greeted by the HE400 SE and a 3.5mm to dual 3.5mm cable with a quarter inch adapter. Now, Hi-Fi Man has a reputation for, regardless of the price range, including not very good cables with their headphones, and unfortunately the HE400 SE is no exception. In fact, I think that this stock cable might be their worst one yet, and that is no easy task. It's an extremely microphonic cable that will make uh, noise from just about any movement. It's very uncomfortable since it holds its shape very strongly and it doesn't feel particularly durable. So I'd suggest that after buying uh, the headphone, it, you look for an aftermarket cable. Now let's talk about build and comfort. Hi-Fi Man's build quality and product lifespan is something that's been put into question several times in the past. That being said though, I've never personally run into any issues with their headphones, including previous editions of the HE400. Structurally, the HE400 SE is sporting the new headband and yokes that were introduced with the Deva, as opposed to the previous designs used on the HE400. This, I think, is a major upgrade as the new yokes are now one solid piece of metal compared to the previous two-piece version that could occasionally have its hinges loosen over time. Additionally, the headband piece feels a lot more rigid and durable than the previous models. By virtue of new materials used on the pads as well as the new headband, the HE400 SE sees considerable comfort upgrades over its predecessors, and I find this to be one of the more comfortable Hi-Fi Man headphones available. I was originally skeptical of the blocky looking new headband, but it's actually quite comfortable with adequate clamp force and surprisingly good weight distribution. Additionally, the pads used on the HE400 SE are now using a more felt or velour-like material for the inside of the pads. For those with facial hair, they'll still be more on the itchy side, but it's an improvement over what felt like bathing suit material on the Sundara. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the changes made to the HE400 in this new SE model. Of course, I can't really test for driver longevity in this review, but structurally, I would say that it's a much more rigid and comfortable feeling headphone than it was in its original form. Now let's talk about its sound. The HE400 SE is, like most Hi-Fi Man headphones, utilizing a planar magnetic transducer, and it's using the original HE400i's double-sided magnet array. One new addition in this SE model is that of Hi-Fi Man's stealth magnets, which have been included to reduce interference as sound waves pass through the magnets. Despite their numerous revisions, one thing that's remained a constant for these HE400 style headphones is their sound signature. And that's a good thing because out of the box I've always found these to have uh, one of the most balanced and enjoyable frequency responses. In brief, I would describe the HE400 SE's tone of balance as one that leans towards what I personally consider to be neutral sounding, with linear bass and mid responses as well as a mostly even treble range. Naturally, because it's using a planar magnetic transducer, it also offers the unique characteristics that are associated with this kind of driver, such as the rapid transients and immediate leading edge. Talking first about the bass, 
the HE400 SE technically does display the excellent qualities that are usually attributed to, to planar magnetic headphones when reproducing low tones. This includes great bass extension that provides more sub bass depth and rumble than even some of the better extending dynamic driver headphones in this price bracket as well as great precision and nimbleness. However, when it comes to the overall bass level, I do feel as though it's not that high on the HE400 SE and it could have used a little more presence. Under 120 Hz, it lacks a base shelf, which makes it a bit lean in the really low registers. Of course, this can be greatly amended if using an amp with a base boost toggle or if using EQ. Though, for some users who are not able to utilize either of those solutions, the base response on the HE400 SE will lack the low and fullness they desire. As for the mids, I think that the mid range on the HE400 SE is excellent. It's linear throughout with clean fundamental tones and good presence in the upper mid range. The only quirk I found here is that, like seemingly all other high format headphones I've tried, there is somewhat of a dip between 1 to 2K of around 3 dB. It's definitely not something at note as being overly detrimental, but in my listening experience this slightly reduces the bite of brass instruments, and particularly when listening to rock music it sounds to me as though electric guitars are a tiny bit muted, which I think is what keeps it just that last step from sounding as organic as, for example, the HD560S in the mids. Then for the HE400 SE's treble range, I think that for the most part it's pretty good. It's not warm, but it's not bright either, and overall I think that it's set at an overall level that the majority of listeners will find to be comfortable. Additionally, it doesn't do so as much as I'd like it to, but it does extend decently into the upper treble, and it does have some nice air qualities above 10k, so it adequately represents the harmonics and overtones that are in that region. The only thing I want to point out here is something that I've heard on prior iterations of the HE400 SE. That is a very mild peak or bump at around 7k. Mind you, this doesn't make the HE400 SE particularly sibilant or harsh, but it does add this odd grittiness to the trill region that I think keeps it from sounding as resolving or as clean as it could. Moving on to technical performance and starting off with resolution, I think that for its $149.99 price tag, the HE400 SE provides really good performance when it comes to detail retrieval and overall image clarity. The base region, it feels particularly well defined and nuanced and I think that that's likely due to the fact that it's using a planar magnetic transducer. For the rest of its frequency range, it does an adequate job of providing uh, a cohesive and stable image of the music. My only critique here is that that grittiness I mentioned earlier as a result of the 7k peak it really holds back the treble range from feeling uh, from being quite as clean or detailed as it could be otherwise the performance it has to offer at this price point it's really tough to beat and it gets very close in internal resolution to that of the HD 560s Moving on to soundstage imaging and layering, the HE400 SE actually has one of the more spacious and open sounding presentations in this price bracket. For soundstage width, it's roughly on par with the HD560S and is able to convey a better sense of distance than something like the HD600 or HD650. Additionally, it's got exceptional layering capabilities, with all instrument and vocal lines being clearly distinguished from each other, allowing you to more easily peer into the music. Where I do think that the HE400 SE performs somewhat poorly is in its imaging, as it just lacks the precision that you get with something like the HD560S or the DT990 Pro. It has a weak center image, and whilst that's perfectly fine for music, it definitely didn't hold up uh, in, for example, FPS uh, games. So if you're looking for an open back gaming solution, this wouldn't be my first option. Lastly, we have dynamics, and again, this is a category where I didn't find the HE400 SE to provide particularly noteworthy performance. In the upper registers, it does have some tactility, which adds some articulation to things like the pluck of acoustic guitar strings or piano keystrokes. However, it really feels lacking when it comes to delivering a satisfying, defined impact in the low end. Very briefly, before we head into the conclusion of this review, I just wanted to touch up on EQ. Now, I do think that the HE400 SE has a very good 
tonal balance straight out of the box and it's not really something I need to use EQ with. However, if you've watched my other reviews, you'll know that I love using EQ just to bring it that bit closer to my personal preference. So uh, in the case of the H400SE, I had a bass shelf just to bring back uh, some of that sub bass presence. And then I also just fill in that uh, 1.5K dip to get more uh, energy or substance to electric guitar since I listen to a lot of rock music. And then I used to cool down that 7K peak just to sort of get rid of that greeting, uh, grittiness. So if you'd like to try out my EQ profile for the HE400SE, there'll be a link in the description down below to a post I've made on the headphone community forums, which is basically a compilation of all my EQ profiles for all the headphones that I've reviewed. Okay, so now to wrap up this review, for nearly a decade, the HE400 style headphones that Hyferman has released have been a go-to for audiophiles. After all, in their respective price points, they've always provided solid performance. And at this new SE14999 uh, price point, I think it offers what may be one of the best values uh, available in the over-year open back market. I think that the HE400SE is a pretty good entry point for both people just getting into the high-end audio hobby or listeners who have yet to try out planar magnetic headphones. So without a doubt, the HE400SE with its reliable sound signature and structural upgrades gets a strong recommendation from me. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. If you'd like to learn more about the HE400 SE or many other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com. As always, for more headphone and audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to Headphone Show on YouTube. And until next time, this is Corona signing off.